Good day everyone. In this session, I'll be talking about family law and the topic for discussion is nullity. The nullity of a marriage has to do with the invalidity of a marriage due to some defects existing at the time the marriage was celebrated. A marriage can be null in the sense that it may be void or voidable. In a petition for nullity, the petitioner is establishing that due to some defect, the marriage is invalid. Before a marriage can be nullified, the first thing to establish is that there was indeed a marriage or a supposed marriage between the parties. The reason for this is because you cannot nullify what never existed. Where there is a decree of dissolution of marriage and a decree for nullity, the court will first establish the marriage to be free from defects that will make it void and voidable. Under nullity, we have void and voidable marriage. We need to know what a void and voidable marriage is. A void marriage is a marriage that has never existed, and because it has never existed, nothing can be done to it, and it cannot be rectified. While a voidable marriage is a marriage that is good while it is still subsisting, but may be annoyed at the instance of one or more defects at the time of the marriage or during the subsisting marriage. Grounds on which a marriage can be void. Section 3 of the Marriage Courses Act gives grounds in which a marriage celebrated after the commencement of the act may be void ab initio. The five grounds include either of the party at the time of the marriage is lawfully married to someone else. Section 3, subsection 1a of the Marriage Courses Act provides that if either of a party to the marriage is at the time of the celebration lawfully married to someone else, such marriage will be null and void. Prohibited degree of affinity and consanguinity. Any marriage conducted in Nigeria by parties in this category will be void. Section 3, subsection 1b of the Marriage Causes Act. Consanguinity means those who are related by blood, while affinity are persons related by marriage. Place of celebration. A marriage under the Act must be celebrated either in the registrar's office or a licensed place of worship. Any marriage conducted otherwise will be void up in issue. This is seen in the case of Belo versus Belo. Lack of real consent. Absence of consent invalidates the marriage, and any consent given under fraud or duress make the marriage void because either of the party has not given real consent. Section 31, subsection DI of the Marriage Courses Act. Marriageable age. Where either of the parties is not of marriageable age, the marriage will be null and void. Section 3, subsection 1E. Section 21 of the Child Rights Act make a marriage conducted by a person under the age of 18 years null and void. Grounds on which a marriage is voidable. Section 5 of the Marriage Causes Act provides where a marriage can be voidable. Incapacity to consummate the marriage. A marriage is voidable where either of the parties is not able to consummate their marriage. That is, have sexual intercourse. Section 5, subsection 1A of the Marriage Causes Act. See the case of Akpan versus Akpan. On soundness of mind, a marriage is voidable if, at the time it was celebrated, one of the parties had a mental defectiveness or had recurrent attacks of insanity or epilepsy. Where it arises after the marriage, it will be voidable. Section 5, subsection 2 of the Marriage Causes Act. Venereal disease. A marriage is voidable where, at the time of the celebration, either of the party is suffering from a venereal disease in a communicable form. Pregnancy of the wife by a person other than the husband. Where a person, at the time of the marriage, was pregnant for another person, the marriage will be voidable at the option of the husband. Thank you.